All right, everyone, welcome to today's first webinar, Research How to Get Started. This is our first webinar in our fall webinar series. I am Megan Kowalski. I am the Outreach and Reference Librarian within the Learning Resources Division. At any time, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat, and we will also have time for Q&A at the end, both recorded and unrecorded. So again, welcome and thank you for attending today. The session is being recorded and it will be posted to our YouTube page. And if you registered for this in advance, you will also get a recording of it. So first we wanna start with looking at what is research? And research is a process by which we explore, investigate and gather information to either find new discoveries or analyze existing ideas. It is a process of systematic inquiry where we ask questions and seek to find the answers to those queries. Research can include reviewing and analyzing existing information or collecting data to find or create new information. And your method or workflow of research will differ from your classmates or your colleagues. And that's okay. Everyone finds their own research process that works for them. And that is because research is an art and not a science. It will change each time you do it, but you will adapt habits and preferences the more you research. And the more you research, the more you learn and your skills will grow as you try different things. And what we have here on the screen is my colleague Kathy created what she likes to call this research process squiggle. And it shows how where you are in the research process is gonna go up and down, it's gonna backtrack, it's gonna loop around on itself and you'll have moments of clarity and then you'll have down points and low points and that's okay. There are a lot of feelings related to research. And today what we're gonna do is focus on getting started. How do you get started with your research assignments? So first, you have the assignment itself. And this is where you wanna bust out your highlighters or your red pen or whatever it is that you prefer and give your assignment an extensive and critical read. Read it more than once. You'll get new things out of it each time. So first, you wanna identify requirements. What is the page count or length if you're doing a podcast or a video? Are there source requirements? Does your professor say you need peer reviewed material? Or are they asking you to require articles or newspapers or video? You also want to identify any other requirements like the topic area you're supposed to cover or the format, which can include things like the margins and the font size of the document. You also want to note the deadline, and that's every single deadline, you know, not just the final one. Are there preliminary steps you're also supposed to look at? And then you also want to look at the final submission requirements. How are you turning this in? Is this a physical item you're handing over or are you uploading it somewhere? Because that can help you determine how you're going to work those things. You also want to note any analysis or method requirements. If you're writing a paper, are you being asked to compare or contrast? Are you being asked to do historical research where you look at how things were in the past and how they developed over time? Are you being asked to express your opinion or share your personal story? Are you doing a simple exploratory paper where you're discussing what you've read? Things like that you need to note because it'll tell you what you need to set out to find when you do your actual research. And if you have any questions or confusion, ask your professor early. The earlier you start, the better your assignment will be. And I cannot stress this enough. Do not start your research assignment the night before it's due. Research takes time and sometimes you need extra days to get material sent to you. So now we wanna find a research topic. And a research topic is an idea that you are exploring for either an academic or a personal information need. And examples of topic areas include student athletes, urban agriculture, modern French literature, family counseling, et cetera, these broad subject areas. And so when you wanna pick a topic, first you have to look at what is required, and then you have to think about what are you interested in? And you can look at that you know, by talking to the professor, skimming through your textbook, and doing some preliminary reading on Google or Wikipedia. And the idea can be broad or narrow to start, but it will get narrower as you go. And how far you narrow down your topic will depend on what you are doing, you know, what you're writing, what the final project is, and what the assignment requirements are. A shorter paper should be narrower than a longer paper because you have less space to discuss what you're looking at. And when narrowing a topic, you want to consider, first, what do you find interesting? You know, it's easier to do a paper or to do a research project when you're interested in what you are researching. Next, you want to focus on, you know, is there a specific group, 
time frame, location, or specific issue you want to focus on. And then what information is available given the amount of time you have to complete this assignment. All of that can help you narrow down your topic. Next, you want to do some more exploration, and this is to get a basic idea of the topic. And this is also known as background reading. And background information provides you with the context and the deeper understanding of a topic. It orients you to what you need to learn before you can start your targeted research. It provides you with the core information you need to know about a topic, subject, or idea, which then makes it easier to develop a research question or thesis. And in this early stage of exploration, Google and Wikipedia are okay. You can jump in between topics and associated content because on Wikipedia, it links pages to one another. And that also helps you see the connection between concepts, ideas, people, places, and things. Plus, one nice thing about Wikipedia is the pages often have links at the bottom to additional resources and actual research cited material. And this can be a great way to jumpstart your research. And you can also use reference resources from the library like Credo, our online reference encyclopedia, or any of our other online or offline encyclopedias. And then when you're doing exploration, you want to keep in mind, what is your personal desire? You know, what do you have opinions about? What are you curious about? And so do you have a personal opinion about something in that topic area? Do you have any experience in the topic area? You know, your personal lived experience is just as important as what you read in a book. And then what aspects of the topic are grabbing your interest? What do you keep being drawn to? Do you still have questions? You know, do you keep thinking, I wish I knew more, more about X? And then what gaps are you finding in the research or what trends are you seeing in your background reading? All of this can help you explore the topic and narrow down what you want to work on. Then you can brainstorm. And the first thing I recommend is brain dumping all your ideas. Just put it all down on paper, nothing is wrong. You wanna talk about what you know, what you wanna know and what you think you know. You know where do you wanna head with this research? And then in brainstorming, you can ask yourself different types of questions. And I'm gonna go through a couple of these. So the first are observational questions. These are questions that relate to your senses about anything that can be seen, heard, touched, or felt. Essentially, they're asking you to discuss what you see about a topic or what jumps out at you. Next, you can ask some introspective questions. And these are questions that ask you to think deeply and look inward about a topic. They ask you to connect your emotions and your personal experiences to the topic. Next, you can ask some retrospective questions. And these are questions that ask you to look backward. They encourage you to think about past perspectives and history and trends within the given area you're looking at. And then you can have some lateral thinking questions. And these are those devil advocate questions. You know, what would the other side say? What is the opposite or an alternative perspective? These questions are also big picture questions where you can explore anything or try something unpredictable. And finally, you can ask some actionable questions. What specific actions can you take or can you look at? Is there a specific thing your research project is trying to solve? And then after brainstorming, you can try mind mapping. And this is where you connect ideas and the questions you have to see what you're drawn to. And in general, what this means is you think of a main idea or topic and then write it down. And then you figure out subtopics to that main topic and show how they branch off or connect to the main topic. And then within those subtopics, you can break it down even further into smaller topics, ideas, or specific examples. Then you can go into writing a thesis. And while you don't need your final thesis before you start your research, it can be very helpful to have an outline of your thesis to keep your research on track. You can start researching sources with a few different theses as long as they cover the same general area. As you research, you will refine your thesis and develop your argument. And if your thesis changes as you work, that's okay. In fact, that's a good thing. It means you're evolving with the information that you find. And a thesis itself is a statement or theory that is put forward as a premise to be maintained or proved. Essentially, a thesis is a question you're trying to answer or an argument you are trying to make. So when you start brainstorming ideas for your thesis, you wanna start by asking, you know, what is interesting about this topic? Do I agree or disagree with the main opinions people have out there? And why do I feel like that? Is my personal experience of this area different or similar to what I've been reading? Is there something in this area that makes me think why or how? 
Do you see patterns emerging in the topic you have to cover? Can you contrast or compare different ideas, methods, or theories in the subject area? What are you curious about in this subject? Can you find new theories, methods, or data in this subject area? And a good thesis statement is clear, concise, and provides detail about your argument. A good thesis statement is never a question. It is, should be the answer to a question. A thesis statement should answer common questions like who, what, when, where, why, how, or because. And a strong thesis is specific and shows your reader exactly what they are going to learn when they read or view your research. And so here's an example of both a good and a bad thesis. A bad thesis would be something like, the internet has improved life. And the reason this is bad is because it's vague, it does not tell the reader why or how. To improve that thesis, you should write something along the lines of, the internet has improved life because it quickly connects people to information, goods, and services that they need. This is a strong thesis statement because it is specific. It tells the reader because, and it provides details on how the internet has improved life. And it also gives you something to research and an argument to prove. So finally, a good thesis passes the so what or who cares test. Your thesis should explain or argue for something that others want to know about. A thesis can't be something everyone knows, like drinking after driving is dangerous. You, you should have to take a stand on an issue where others could disagree with you or add further research. And you want to explain a topic that is, you know, not commonly understood. You know, the earth is round is not a good thesis. So once you have your thesis, you need to identify your needs before you jump into looking for sources. So first you want to consider the format of your final assignment. Is it a paper? Is it a podcast? Is it a presentation to your class? The format determines what kind of information you need. Then you also want to consider the requirements for what kinds of sources are required or that will help you prove your thesis statement. So do you need scholarly or peer reviewed? Some papers do, some presentations do, others don't. Do you need articles? Do you need books? Do you need ebooks? If you're doing a presentation or a podcast, do you need media like photos, videos, or audio? All of these things can help you find what you need. And then you want to look at the number of sources. Some people, some professors require a specific number of sources. If they don't have a requirement, we generally like to recommend that you aim for four to five per page when you're searching, and then only use what you actually need. The longer your paper or assignment is, the more sources you will need. You also wanna consider what existing knowledge do you already have? So what do you already know about this topic? And then what questions do you still have? And then finally, you wanna consider the audience. Who is reading, viewing, or listening to the final assignment? Is it just your professor? Is it your classmates? Or are you being told it's a, for a specific group? For example, you need to know you know, if you're presenting this to children or adults, because then the sources are different. You would talk to children differently than you would talk to adults. And then there are the next steps. What's next? Once you have your working thesis, you can start the next steps of the research process. And this is where you can identify the keywords or terms in your thesis. You can choose where to search, and this is where you want to head to the library. And then you can start the actual search itself. And if you ever get stuck, ask a librarian. We're here to help. And the rest of our webinars in this fall series will provide you information to help you work through the research process for all of your assignments. And if you ever want to have help from a librarian, please don't hesitate to contact us. Our email is ask at udc.libanswers.com. We have an online chat service. We also offer appointments both online and in person. And you can visit us in person anytime at the reference desk. And now I'd be happy to take any questions you may have, and there will be time for unrecorded questions at the end as well. So please feel free to either unmute yourself or put it in the chat. Giving everyone a chance. I will say the hardest part of research is getting over that hurdle of getting started. So we hope this information was useful to you today.
right, not seeing any questions. So I just wanna do a quick wrap up and say thank you for attending today. Um, I will have some time for unrecorded questions at the end. And right now I'm dropping into the chat a link for a assessment form. And we would love to hear from you about uh, this webinar and then our entire series so that we can offer better webinars uh, you know, about information you like in the future. And yes, question came in, did you say you are available on the chat? Yes, if you go to the library's main website, there is a slide out that pops out as soon as you log on and that's our chat service. If we are not available online, it will um, prompt you to either, to either email us or schedule an appointment. Um, one question, what resources can student access? Um, on our university library website, which is udc.libguides.com, there are two main search areas. The first is our UDC, and that's our public search box at the top of our website. And what that does is it walks you through all the resources available to you, not just here at UDC, but also available through WRLC. We are a part of the Washington Research Library Consortium, so you'll see books and online resources that you have available to you both here at UDC and that you can request from those other schools. And then underneath that, you will see a link for our A to Z resource list. And when you click on that, you will see all the databases the library provides you access to or publicly available databases that we recommend. And right now, I believe it's over 260. And within those databases, you'll find articles, both scholarly and non-scholarly, um, newspapers, video, audio, books, and eBooks as well. Megan, can I add to um, the index of research guides that we have too? We have subject specific guides uh, for every program at UDC that kind of we have recommended resources for particular programs that might help you kind of sort through the massive amount of information that is available. Yes, thank you, Kathy. And that again on our website, udc.libguides.com, there is a box called Quick Links, and those guides are under resource guides. Another question, with all the online resources with the library, where is a good place to start besides Google Scholar? Well, it depends on what you're looking for, but when it comes to using the library's resources, a good place to start is our multi-subject databases. A couple of the ones we like to recommend are Academic Search Premier, Opposing Viewpoints and Contexts, and uh, ProQuest Multiple Database Search. If you go to the A to Z resource page, resource list, you'll see those under the right-hand side under a box called popular because they are most popular. Google Scholar is also a great place to start when you're in that exploratory phase. Um, the one downside with Google Scholar is it's gonna show you things you don't necessarily have access to through the library. Some things we do have, some things we don't. It is Google, so it's just the open web. Hope that answered the question there. Uh, another question, is there any access to the Library of Congress? Yes, the Library of Congress at loc.gov has their own online catalog and they are digitizing as many resources as they can. And also because we are here in DC, anyone can go to the library and get a reader card to use their facilities in person. I will say, uh, sometimes you need to request stuff ahead of time simply because it is so big, they have to bring it from their offsite storage facilities, but that is available to you here. And if you need help using those resources, the library is happy to help. And yes, Pete dropped the link to the A to Z resource in the chat. I will also say as a UDC student, you have access to uh, the DC Public Library system. And you can get a DC Public Library card either in person or online, and you can start using their online resources right away. In fact, we librarians use them all the time for both our personal and professional work because they have different stuff than our library offers, but they are available to you. And again, we are here to help you use those resources. And I just want to add one other thing to that, um, which is that we also are in a consortium with multiple other schools in the DC area. Um, it's called WRLC. Uh, so places like Georgetown, George Mason, American Catholic, Howard, um, depending on how what their level of openness is. Um, and so you want to go, you we do have access to those most uh, for most visitors, those libraries are only open to current students, faculty, or staff of those institutions. But because we're part of a consortium, we can go onto their campus and use their resources, depending on how open they are. So you may want to double check um, with their individual websites 
So if, but if something like Georgetown is closer to you, um, you are, as long as Georgetown is open to WRLC guests, you are free to go in and use their resources um, in person and you can check out books from there as well. Or you can request that books from those locations be sent uh, here as well. Thank you, Glenn. All right, any other questions? All right, well, thank you for attending today and I'm gonna stop the recording now in case anyone would like to, any, to ask any questions uh, unrecorded. One moment.